Did you guys know I met Marjan Bochamp's guardian? It's his aunt who adopted him. And I, I worked as a local news reporter. And I was doing a story in Topeka, Kansas at a middle school. And I had to interview the vice pres principal. Guess who's the vice principal? Marjan Bochamp's guardian. And I'm interviewing her. And she has like a Marjan Bochamp shrine. And after the interview, I go, hey, why do you have Marjan Bochamp's Yakima Community College jersey? Why do you have Marjan Bochamp's G League at night jersey? Why do you have Marjan Bochamp's Milwaukee Bucks jersey? And like, just like all this memorabilia of Marjan Bochamp. And she goes, oh, that's like my son, like my adopted son. I'm like, I'm, I'm a really big fan, NBA journalist, we talk. And at the end of the conversation, she pulls out her drawer and she goes, I usually give this to students as like motivation, et cetera, et cetera, like a, a reward for a good job. And she gives me a signed picture of Marjan Bochamp. I have that picture of Marjan Bochamp framed right now over my shoulder. Now, the story, first off, he's wearing zero in it. And that sucks because now he's number three. So I just want to share that little story right now. Marjan Bochamp for the Milwaukee Bucks had himself, some might say, a decent preseason open. And again, we're not going to overreact, but let's just, okay, let's try, just talk about what this Marjan Bochamp means to the Milwaukee Bucks. And you guys are like, what do you mean by that zero? The guy averaged 18 and nine, shot 45% from the field, 33 from three. Nothing insane. He was a kid who played 52 games last year, 14 minutes a night, shot 39.5% from the field, 33% from three. His best month was the month of December where he shot 45%. Look, Marjan Bochamp, I think, has to be arguably one of the most important players on this roster in terms of having success. All right. So the Bucks obviously are probably going to run a starting lineup of Brooke Lopez, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Chris Middleton, Damian Lillard, and potentially probably Pat Connington with Bobby Portis as the sixth man. Then you have the bench, which probably the first guys, five guys off the bench. After Bobby Portis, you got probably three to four more guys. That's going to be Jay Crowder, Marjan Bochamp, Malik Beasley, and arguably, you know, when you look at the Bucks, that's where it gets a little interesting behind that. And I think Marjan Bochamp is the guy who's going to be able to take, like, there's Cameron Payne there now, but let's not act like he's moving the needle because the thought is Marjan Bochamp is this guy who's young, Six foot seven with like a seven foot three wingspan. Okay. He's got size. He's athletic as all hell. Okay. And yes, his shoot jump shot is inconsistent, but it has the potential to become an, an acceptable one. And that first step and the way he's a good, you know, user of screens, he's actually a good ball handler and he's great cutter slasher to the basket in transition or off ball. And he finishes around the rim pretty well. And he's a very, very, very good on ball defender thanks to that great lateral quickness and good footwork as well as that seven foot plus wingspan. And dude, he's like a menace on the offensive rebounds. And then for me, when I look at him right now, Bochamp is an insane defender. Like he takes pride. Like he does a great job on closeouts. He really knows how to get there. He knows how to contest stuff. Does a good job of sliding those feet. And First off, the story about him, his story, ooh, love it, love it, love it, love it. And I think his weakest part of his game is passing, but I love his story. I love him as a prospect. I love how hard he's worked to manufacture himself into this player. And I personally think that what he's did is smart. He's built a game that made sense for today's NBA, like, Bochamp worked on his off-ball skills, his defense, his motor, and that's what teams want. I feel like that's going to bode well. And I think his, you know, his shooting's getting better because I don't know. I think the problem with him is, like, I think he can become, like, an acceptable shooter. It's just that his touch isn't great, but his feel for the game offensively isn't natural, but he knows how to do it. So I think the fact that he's so versatile in defense and he's able to become, like, at least an average shooter – 
I'm very, I'm, I'm buying into the fact that he's someone that you, you have to believe that he's going to be able to help make a difference for the Milwaukee Bucks as he really behind Bobby Portis. There's, there's a legit chance, guys, that he should be the, the one that gets argued behind Bobby Portis and Cameron Payne. Marjan Bochim could be the third guy the, playing. He could be Chris Middleton's backup. Chris Middleton probably is going to play like 30 minutes a night. That's right there, 18 minutes easily that Marjan Bochim can get. And if he's, you know, shows his worth, maybe he gets, you know, also some shooting guard and power forward minutes. That could be 20 plus minutes a night. He could be playing completely. So I think there's like a really real role for him here. And... I just like him also as like a person. I love his story. Like his story is just so unique and like very, very humble, dude. I actually, you know, I met him. I met Marshawn Bochamp at Summer League and he, it was shoot around before his Summer League game. And I just real quickly wanted to say it. So I just walked up to him. He was taking a free throw. First off, I'm like 6'1". He's like 6'7". And I'm not a small dude, but felt small. Um, <laughs> I just went up and was like, hey, man, told him the story about I know your aunt or like your mom or whatever. Uh, and yeah, he, I think he was so awkward, but he was like so caught off guard. He was like, oh, cool. I was like, yeah, big fan, man. Take care. He's like, thanks. <laughs> just, it, that was it. That was it. So I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Um, I'm excited to see what he does this season, but if you guys want to hear more videos like this, like, comment, and subscribe. It'll mean the world to me as we're trying to, you know, do some independent NBA journalism. And I always am trying to do new stuff, get out the box, and enjoy. So, hope you guys enjoyed, but I'm going to go. Because I do need to. So, peace out, everybody. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. As we're on the way to 20,000. It's 7.47 in the morning. So, I also, like, dude, I put accidentally duct tape on my lip. Ripped my lip so bad. I'm usually at 116. I don't know if I'm getting muscle. But I'm at 160 now. Nine now. Worried. Worried, guys.